So what exactly are IAS, PAS, and SAS? That's coming right up. Hey YouTube, this is David Staples coming back to you today with another video. Today we're talking about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, also known as IAS, PAS, and SAS. So when we're talking about these as a service type offerings, you might hear some others that have been defined as like DBAS, database as a service, or all sorts of other things, right? But the three main ones that have been defined by NIST or the National Institute of Standards and Technology are those three, the, the infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So those are the three that we're going to be focusing on. So when we start off with infrastructure as a service, this is the idea that we are taking this kind of enterprise IT scenario that we might have for our organization. Here's a, a great chart uh, from gsa.gov uh, that essentially is taking some of the components that we are typically responsible for when we're running our own data centers on premises and we're returning that responsibility over to somebody else such as an Amazon Web Services or a Google Cloud or an Azure from Microsoft to make sure that we don't have to spend time working on things that aren't really relevant to the actual goal of the business. So when we say relevant to the goal of the business, so let's talk about companies like Coca-Cola or FedEx or UPS or Toyota or Honda or Lexus or whoever else, right? Those businesses, do you think they're in business to run data centers? They're really not, right? Now, a lot of them have data centers, but why do they have data centers? It's really kind of a supplementary thing that they do in addition to the main function of their business, which is to develop new cars or to develop sodas and sell sodas or drinks or Powerade or whatever else, right? Uh, insurance companies, they're in the business to actually sell you insurance plans and whatever. So they're not really in the business of running and maintaining and operating these data centers. So essentially, when we start moving to these cloud service providers, or CSPs as you might also hear them referred to, uh, such as AWS and, and Google Cloud and Azure, we're taking some of these responsibilities and turning them over to that cloud service provider. And that first step is what we know as infrastructure as a service. So rather than running physical servers, now I can start looking at just running some virtual machines. So I'm going to pop up into our AWS environment here, uh, and we're going to go into a service here called EC2. So to get to EC2, this is our Elastic Compute Cloud, also known as Virtual Servers here in the cloud. Uh, so I'm just going to type in EC2 into my search box up top in that demo account that we created back in a previous video. If you haven't watched that, certainly feel free to go back and watch that whenever you've got some time. Uh, so when I come into EC2, I can come in and create a new virtual machine or virtual server just by clicking on this Launch Instance button. And that Launch Instance button is going to allow me to configure any number of different operating systems as well as the amount of uh, memory and CPU that I need to be able to run whatever it is that I'm trying to run on that virtual machine. So I've still got a lot of control there on on Linux server, it's going to give me root access. On a Windows server, it's going to give me that main administrator access. And I can go in and install and uninstall applications as I see fit. I'm responsible for patching and updating the operating system. I'm responsible for doing all these various different tasks that we would typically do on virtual machines within our own on-premises servers, right? So that's our infrastructure as a service. So as we start to move beyond running our own virtual machines, in the cloud and say, you know, I'd really like to start moving to perhaps the serverless world. I know that term serverless, it sounds kind of weird. The idea is not that we are not using servers. It's just that we're no longer actually responsible for the servers. Amazon or Microsoft or Google or whatever cloud service provider you're using. I know there's Oracle and IBM and all these other cloud service providers out there, right? So I'm not trying to, to downplay them or say you shouldn't use those. Again, my experience is really just with the big three. Uh, but when we start looking at moving away from running our own virtual machines and into this platform as a service environment, we can look at services such as Lambda on AWS. So Lambda essentially allows me to come in and create functions. Within that function, I can choose a variety of different developing languages or development languages such as .NET. I've got Go, Java, Node.js, Python, and Ruby. Uh, you'll see that there's others listed down below here. Uh, but essentially it allows me to write code and execute that code on demand when it needs to. And then when it's not running, 
it's basically just sitting there on a disk somewhere and it's able to be accessed and run on demand at any time. Another great example of platform as a service is going to be our RDS service that we have available to us. So that is RDS up here in the search box. And this stands for Relational Database Service. So essentially when I come into RDS, I'm going to create database. So if I go in and then choose a MySQL or Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server or Postgres or MariaDB or whatever else uh, database in the RDS service here, I'm not responsible for the underlying operating system. Amazon's going to take care of that for me. I'm also not responsible for patching and updating the database engine on here. So if I was to come in here and choose MySQL, uh, specifically I want this particular version or this particular edition, I can choose which edition that I want. And so when we keep on scrolling down here just a little bit, we can actually see uh, one of the options down towards the bottom. Let's see, it's down below. Let's see, monitoring additional configuration. Here's what I'm looking for. Uh, we'll keep on scrolling down into that one, and you'll see that we can enable or disable the enable auto minor version upgrade. So Amazon is going to take care of that for us, where I don't have to worry about updating all these little patches as they come out for that particular minor version. So that's our platform as a service. So let's take a look at software as a service, basically saying, you know, I don't really want to be responsible for any of that. So let's move into using software as a service. So that's going to be something kind of like Gmail. Gmail is a great email tool. You saw that I use that myself. Uh, there's also Outlook.com, also not a bad option, just I don't need that many different email providers. But you could also look at other types of software as a service as well, things like uh, CRM, Customer Relationship Management Systems, such as Salesforce. Salesforce is a very popular one out there. By the way, this is not an endorsement of any of the brands that I've talked about today. I'm just simply trying to give you some examples because people tend to know what some of these different things are. But again, these are the three main types of cloud services that you can expect to see from these cloud service providers. So we've got our infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So whether you're studying for a CompTIA certification or a Microsoft certification or one of the AWS certifications or any other certification, or you just wanted to learn a little bit more for your own knowledge, I hope you found this information helpful and useful. And be sure to stay tuned for a whole lot more cloud videos. We are going to perhaps branch out on some other things that are technology related as well. But I hope you'll subscribe and like this video. It certainly helps me out with the algorithm when you do. And if you've got any questions, be sure to check out the comments down below. I'm happy to answer any of those. But in the meantime, be sure to also check out the description down below as well. I'm going to put some links that are relevant to some of the things we've talked about today or some of the things we've seen in these videos. But in the meantime, you guys take care and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.